Welcome everybody. Today we are going to talk about this concept of being a Berean. If you were in the ICOC, you have heard this phrase before and you've heard it many times. And as an ex-member of the ICOC, I know I have. The first place you heard it, that I heard it, was, you know, in the first principle Bible studies. It probably would be in the word study, where you're taught about, and taught is in quotations, but, you know, you're taught about the word of God. And and part of, you know, this being a Berean was It was all taken from the scripture in Acts 17, verse 11. And it says, you know, the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians. They received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. So much hinges on this one scripture which is a lot of the doctrine in the ICOC, it hinges on these these anchor scriptures. And it was this idea of being a Berean where they focused on this challenge. They said, we're challenging you to be a Berean. You know, in the Bereans, the difference between them and the Thessalonians were you know, the Bereans had more noble character and, you know, they received the message and and they really focused on examining the scriptures every day to see if what, you know, said was true. So the whole examining the scriptures every, every day That's what it's translated to to mean. And if you are of more noble character, then you will be reading your Bible every day. So this is the whole Berean situation and, and and you know being a Berean, they say do you, you know, you need to be a Berean if you really want to truly, you know, know the word of God and be a good Christian, be, you know, to be doing this right, to be righteous. Um, And, and on the surface, it makes sense, especially if you're someone who you don't, you're not familiar with the Bible. I wasn't familiar with the Bible. I, you know, grew up in, in in Catholicism where it wasn't, you know, a thing where you needed to read your Bible every day or you needed to know the scriptures specifically. I mean, we, you know, I went to Catholic school, so we learned about the scriptures through those classes that we had to take. And so, you know, this is presented. It's like, oh, wow, you know, um, Okay, I can see why if you're going to say you're going to follow the Bible, then, and that's the doctrine of the Christian religion, and I'm learning about being a Christian, then I probably should want to, quote unquote, be a Berean, right? It makes sense. Now, when you're in the ICOC, and you take this challenge, you go through the indoctrination studies, the first principle studies, you make it to water baptism, you know, you're, you're officially a member of the ICOC, what they consider to be saved, what they consider to be a disciple. Now, the challenge is ongoing to be a Berean every day. What does that look like? It looks like, like I talked about in another video on note-taking, 
when you're in church services, whether it's Sunday, whether it's midweek, whether it's at a conference or a retreat, you are all devotional. You need to be taking notes. You need to have your Bible with you, number one, and you have to have your notebook. And we also talked about how when when you have a Bible that is is marked up with lots of sticky notes and highlighter pen and your Bible just looks beat up and used, that is a marker in the ICOC of your spirituality, AKA you being a Berean. So the more of a Berean you are, the more beat up your Bible looks, the more used it looks, the more the highlights are, you know, in the book. And also being a Berean was measured by your quiet times. So quiet times were very important as a marker of your spirituality. And, and if you were a real Berean, then you were having daily quiet times. You were, you know, highlighting your Bible. You, you know, you were constantly, you know, as a sign that you're reading it, that you're studying it, that you are just diving into the word. You're hungry for the word. And, and that was the whole thing of, you know, this eagerness, this nobility of being a Berean, that, you know, you are seeking God by being a Berean. You are seeking God by constantly, you know, reading your Bible and and, and the signs of that is that it's used, that you got tabs in it, that you, you know, you have a, a journal that you're writing in that, that's full, that's got sticky notes in it. Um, and I guess in modern times, I don't know what that looks like exactly when you have like, you know, a smart device, but I'm sure, you know, you're highlighting things on your tablet or your phone, but it's showing that you're this Berean, that you are not a Thessalonian, that you really do, you know, you really do exhibit these noble characteristics. And I don't have anything bad to say about that in and of itself, except that it's one more thing that was used against members, that it's one more thing that was imposed onto members, just like, you know, discipleship. And, you know, where mentors are not a bad thing, you know, having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with someone who is more mature in the faith than you, that can guide you, that you can go to for advice when you need it, is perfectly normal and healthy. But when they take these things, they twist it and they make it very toxic. They make it mandatory. They make it, you know, this thing you have to do and you have to do it in the way that they want you to do it as often as they want you to do it. And it's used as a means of control, which that isn't the, the intention you know, or rather it's something that's neutral that is just, you know, is used because of the church and how toxic it is. So if you want to read your Bible every day, that's a personal choice. But, you know, this whole Berean thing was, was a cultural idea where it was imposed on you you were judged according to it. And it was just this constant pressure. You know, you had to be having these awesome quiet times every day and, the, you know, and have the, you know, these mind blowing sessions every time you flipped open the Bible. And it's like, 
you know, every time is not going to be like that. And in fact, for some of us, you know, myself included, I mean, I hit a ceiling with the whole being a Berean thing where it just got redundant after a while. It's like, how many times is the church going to do, you know, a challenge at the beginning of each year where we're going to read through the book of Galatians or we're going to read through the book of Acts. We're going to, you know, or we're going to read the Bible from front to back. You know, how many times are we, you know, we're going to do it. And the idea, you know, across the Christian diaspora, you know, is really this thing where the Bible is just, it's this living word. So it's the gift that keeps on giving that if you're a Berean, you're just going to keep getting epiphanies and revelations from reading the same passages over and over again. And for me, there became a point where, you know, that wasn't the case. You know, it's like, okay, I've hit a ceiling here. I don't, I don't know what to do because, you know, okay, I'm reading my Bible, but and, and there's always like, they move the benchmark. They, you know, they keep moving it, the goalpost. Well, if, if you're stale, then they tell you, you got to pray more. You got to do something to shake it up. You got to go outside in the morning and pray instead of doing it next to your bed. Well, you got to do this, you know, put a little, put a little spark back in your relationship with God kind of thing. And, and I think as a final note, I think that was really like the problem there. At least one of them was really that they equated behaviors and routines with a spiritual connection with God, you know, with the higher source. It's like, you know, it became it became crystallized into these things that you need to do, you know, versus something that really can't be contained in that way. So they always talk about, you know, being a Berean, reading your Bible every day, you know, having a quiet time every day, praying, you know, to God, you know, going on long prayer walks, all these things. But they really take the heart out of a lot of that. And it becomes something that you have to do. It becomes legalistic, which, you know, I should do another video on legalism because they always put people down saying, oh, you're being legalistic or these other these other churches are legalistic, but the ICOC is the most legalistic church anywhere. They're more legalistic than anybody. And, you know, a, a, a huge example of that is just being a Berean concept. You know, that you read your Bible every day, you're going to have noble character and, or it shows you have noble character and you're going to, and somehow this is going to make you into a better person. And I, I really think that's why in a lot of churches, that's why you find some of the worst people, because they can read their Bible every day and still be, you know, a horrible human being. Because it, it's it's just it's just works. It's just, you know, it's just action, repetition. And at the end of the day, I think that's what's so dead about the ICOC why people burn out, why you realize that there, a lot of people have said, you know, they didn't feel a sense of spirit there, of life there. It felt very spiritually dead. And I think a big part of that is because it's so performative and they take everything and they make it, they make it something on your to-do list. And then they make it, you know, very toxic. They, they make it this this benchmark of your relationship with God, which is not something that anyone else can quantify for you or judge. 
So that's all I have to say on this. What are your thoughts? Feel free to share in the comment section. And I look forward to talking to you again next time.